2020 Arkansas Teacher of the Year. In our previous video, we mentioned that the Danielson Group's Framework for Remote Teaching document has been released and that they've outlined a pathway for using the framework, really focusing on three critical areas. Now, they've done this in order to prioritize student well-being and equity. And in this video, we will explore kind of the first area of knowing and valuing your students. I really believe that this year, and really every year, an administrator or instructional coach being in a classroom should not be a scary thing. It should be welcomed because it's focused on supporting excellent teaching. How can we grow together? How can we learn from each other and provide the supports needed to improve? And regardless of the delivery method for instruction, whether it's face-to-face -face or virtual, I think relationships are the foundation for learning. Students won't feel connected to the content until they feel connected to the teacher. And something important to remember is that uh, the idea of getting to know your students and their families is not over after the first week of school. It's crucial that it starts then, but it has to be continuously developed and improved over the whole year. And let's focus on how we can demonstrate knowledge of our students and engage families and communities, even in a remote environment. I think knowing our students must include knowing them in a variety of ways. Sure, we have to know our academic strengths and needs for each student, but we must also know their personalities, how they learn best, their social-emotional strengths and needs as well, and what supports they have at home. By knowing our students and valuing who they are as individuals, we can create a more personalized approach to learning. And I really believe that students are more likely to take ownership of their learning when they see themselves as valued members of that learning community. Doing this remotely may take on a variety of looks, but let's share just a couple of ideas here. Think about conducting one-on-one -on -one student interviews through video conferencing. I think these can be done quickly so that you can get to more students, and as the year goes on, you may consider continuing these in small group environments. I would consider letting students sign up for a time with people that they feel comfortable with, friends even, because they're going to feel more willing to share in that small group environment. If instruction is being done asynchronously, then I think you might think about how students can be reflective and share that with you, and maybe share that with students depending on what you've asked. Uh, this could take the form of writing journals or short videos and allowing students to work in groups or on tasks based on shared interest is another way for you to just connect with students in the future. If instruction is being done synchronously, you might think about posing questions that check in on students uh, within the lesson, whether that's beginning, uh, in the middle, or even at the end. And these don't always have to be academic questions. They can be used uh, as an opportunity for students to make connections with each other, but also for the educator and students to continue their connection uh, even in the future as well. But we've got to also consider how are we engaging our families and communities in the learning process. Part of valuing our students is valuing their families and the environment they are currently in. And it's even more important, I really believe, in the virtual environment where students are learning away from the school building. Teachers must work to be culturally competent and understand each student's circumstances because they're all different. Regularly checking in with families has to be the norm with virtual learning. And also consider how that communication with families can then be shared among teachers and staff who may share the same students. I've seen many creative ways that teachers are working to value and know their students, and to me this is the starting point of the learning process. We must work to understand our students as a whole person so that we can partner with families and communities to meet the needs of our students socially, emotionally, and academically. Be sure to tune in next week at this same Joel time and same Joel channel for Tess in a Virtual World, Episode 3.